I am freaking already getting excited for arms. You would not believe what time it is right now. It is about 12.30? I need to fix my... Yeah, one twenty, close enough. It is rare for me to lift this early. This is fucking very good. So, school rec center again. It should be dead around now. Like, typically peak hours ends up being at about probably five to seven. That's when it can be pretty fucking crowded. But honestly, like, I mean, I, I kind of hate to say it, but a lot of the fluff dudes who are only going in there for like the first week, they're kind of chilling out. You know, because every time everybody goes to college, they're like, all right, I'm going to start working out. You know, I, uh, I don't want to be so negative as to say, like, I'm kind of glad that it's more empty. But, you know, to an extent, I kind of fucking am glad it's a little bit more empty. So, I'm going to double up on a serving of the stim-free bloodshot. Damn. I had it. I had the... So, there's a hostility that matches that flavor, the watermelon candy, but I don't have it. So I gotta mix it in with grape bubble gum. On their own, both of these are good. In combination, in combination, watermelon, grape, it's an interesting flavor, I'll say that. But honestly, that's not the point. I know that this is gonna correlate with a freaky ass pump. So I'm gonna drink this before I even leave to go to the gym, because it's literally two seconds away. And I like to have the pre at least 20 minutes before the warm-up starts. Because it's not doing anything until then. But arms... Arms ends up being a pretty simple lift. Biceps especially. It's just going to be, you know, 11-ish. Actually, I'm, I'm kind of switching up my mentality with how I approach a workout. So, you know, you've kind of heard me say before, in terms of volume, so... My frequency, like I hit my, I hit every muscle a little less than twice a week because I, I do a four day split. But if you hit everything about twice a week, then in my opinion, I think you should do about eight to 12 working sets per muscle group in a single lift. So I would say a good chest day is going to have about eight to 12 sets total. So if you do two sets of incline bench, two sets of dumbbell bench, two sets of machine press, you know, the, add all that up, eight to 12, I think is about right. And I've been kind of doing 11 just arbitrarily, like it's within that range and it feels good, but I'm starting to think I kind of want to decrease the volume because I've done lifts where I was kind of in a rush and like I've done only six sets of biceps. I mean, that was the last arm day and they still felt fucking pretty pumped and pretty fatigued. Now, I guess I won't know until, you know, I do it for a prolonged amount of time, whether or not I'll still get the same growth. Because right now, honestly, I could change my training style very significantly. And since I'm just trying to maintain muscle in a calorie deficit, you know, I'm not really going to know if doing a different amount of, an amount of blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to know if doing a different amount of volume is going to give me very different results because, you know, I'm still training hard. I'm getting hyped up every lift. I'm trying to maintain my strength. You get the idea. But, you know, I'm not making any progress, really. In a cutting phase, you're almost <laughs> pausing your muscular progress to make some fat loss progress, right? And then when you're actually bulking, that's when you can see if your training is effective or not in combination with a calorie... Uh, surplus but i think the next bulk i'm going to try to significantly change some of the training i think i've been doing this style for a pretty considerable amount of time i want to change it up so you know i want to get into some lower volume stuff like maybe a chest day where i only do six total working sets and maybe add more drop sets and supersets and stuff like that you know i've got this whole you know cut to think about how i want to change that up but I definitely do not want to get stuck in having a stagnant and just stale training routine. You know, I'm not sure this exact phrase is like immediately like 100% accurate, 
but I think we've all heard the fucking term, you gotta shock the muscle. You know, I think, I think sort of my mentality is more so along the lines of, uh, I'm trying to find something that's very effective for me in terms of the training. And clearly what I've been doing is not bad, but I want to see if there's something a little better, you know, unrelated. Well, actually kind of related. It's fucking arm day with triceps. I need to add some more overhead shit. You know, I am, I'm a killer on the press down on a, you know, tricep push down, single arm push down, whatever. But dude, I've been really slacking on the overhead stuff. I love a machine where you sit down and you've got like a lever arm with a W bar handle. It's kind of niche. Like you don't really see it at like a planet fitness or the Y or like even a lifetime fitness. It's kind of more of like a bodybuilder catered gym piece of equipment. But I love that machine. I need to figure out a way to jerry rig that type of movement because I don't love doing overhead dumbbell where you sit with a big dumbbell behind your neck. I think that's just me be <laughs> Me being an asshole complaining that I need to stretch my shoulders more. But I'm going to drink this and uh, we can get started on the first working set of triceps. They got a new, they've got a bunch of new machines in here. Super nice for me, but this cable stack, even though it's super smooth, I love it. It's slightly too light. I would prefer to go a little bit heavier, but eh, whatever. This first set, whole stack, I'll just go slow, really control it. And then as I get more and more fatigued, the stack will be heavy enough for a heavy set of like, you know, 15. But I'm just going to sit here and spam this for a few sets and then we'll move on to something else. I've been trying to get a little bit stricter with my push down form, but yeah, three of the, three more of these would be perfect. want to try some fucking skull crushers now obviously since I've already pre-exhausted myself with these I won't have to go so heavy I don't like skull crushers first they kind of fuck with my elbows so this is the equivalent of um, I don't fucking know how much weight this is 25 75 125 it's like 130 ish that's about right fresh I think I can move you know two plates with the easy bar curl so that's what like 200 ish, but that would fuck up my elbows. I did a feeler rep with this weight and it felt pretty good. So I think I'll do one burnout set. This is definitely a hack of a setup. You put a bench right up against a creature curl and then you can just unrack it right there. But uh, let's do one, one, one legit set and then uh, if it feels good, I'll do a few more. <clears throat> Yes. <laughs> 
Let's do something else. Not sure what. Um, this skull crusher felt pretty good. I totally fatigued the fuck out of my triceps. I definitely got some long head activation too. I can kind of feel it. So maybe I should add those in. Lighter towards the end of the lift, not heavy. Because in the beginning, you can really get your fucking elbows really tender. But now I think a set of, uh, actually I'll go even lighter than this. You know, light-ish push downs with these handles like this style of grip and then i mean i'm really just going to try to squeeze this set is not about the weight but i may do one or two and do something else to finish Let's finish with some kind of single arm something. Get some curls started. After a sufficient warm up, let's throw the 75s around to the Baki season three opening song. I gotta drop it to the 65s for the next set. <laughs> that was good though. Let's move on to something else. Okay. 
I think the whole stack on a set of straight bar cable curls would be perfect. I'm a little bit nervous because I don't love straight bar cable curls. It's kind of a lot of torque on my wrists, but I did a feeler rep and it felt pretty good. So I'll just try to burn out. Okay, that's probably it. One more. Fuck, man, I'm doing another one. And then I'll, I'll move on. But this feels pretty good right now. I think some easy bar preacher curls are in order. I like this a lot. For a while, I did not care for these straight bar cable curls because they kind of torqued my wrist. But honestly, I'm kind of changing up my technique. Usually I have my arms like at my sides on the sides of my lats. So I think that puts extra pressure on my forearms. Because I was doing them this time, I felt like I was trying to have my elbows in front of me like a preacher in front of my lats. Whether or not that information helps you, Whatever. Let's do some preachers. Okay. I'm going to have to recount the clips on the camera because I forget how many, uh, how many sets of those cable curls I did. But honestly, I think I'm probably just going to finish off with these preachers. This set is a 25 and a 10. That's probably going to be close to failure around 10-ish reps just by guessing. Obviously, I'm going to try to do as many as possible. Actually, I'm gonna, I'll ask somebody to give me some assisted reps. But I'll, I'm just going to probably sit here for the rest of the lift unless I spontaneously think I want to do something else. So let me, let me find a spotter. There's a guy doing preacher curls behind me. I'm sure he'll help me out. It's a, that's a weird spot. No, but that was, that was good. That was what I wanted. Okay. 
Oh, fuck. Okay. Two more of these and then we're done. Bro, I've been so busy. Alright, don't uh, hey, don't distract my spotter. I'm so sorry, man. I'm yeah, I'll let it slide this time. Okay, okay, come on. Use your best judgment. Alright. Let me know when you need assistance now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's good. I, uh, this will be solo. Oh, okay. Okay. Last set. Failure on the preachers. But then I'll stand up, flip around, and do just easy bar curls. Because doing a, like doing a preacher curl of the 25 feels a lot heavier than just standing up, getting a little bit of swing in the beginning, and then finishing the rep. So it's not really a drop set. It's more of a like a mechanical drop slash super set. But after this, dude, my biceps will fucking... I make this joke so much. I like this shirt. I don't want to blow the sleeves off. Let's go check the phone, man. We're done. Whoops. Forgot to hit record. Uh, Look, like I only did two poses. No, so I was going to say, the one thing that I waited this whole workout the longest for was this little posing area right here. Because for whatever reason, the lighting in the whole gym is kind of shit. But it has this one specific area that's badass. So let's go through some, uh, some classics. Oh. Dude, I fucking love a front lat spread with an arm pump. Ugh. It's just fucking sick. That's another good one. I think a uh, back double by and then we're done. That's really all there is. Okay. So. What did we do that was so fucking complicated? Let's, uh, let's review the workout from beginning to end. There was a variety of curls, a variety of pushdowns, a little bit of uh, skull crusher action, but that's fucking basic shit. Everybody knows. I didn't even do any drop sets or anything weird like that. So 11 sets of tries and buys. Like I was saying at home, I'm considering changing the amount of volume I do in my lifts, but I mean, based on this pump, it really doesn't look like I have to. So let's, uh, let's cut to either the kitchen or a meal or something. I'm not really sure what, but I'm just going to sit here and loiter for a little while before I go home. All right. Color settings look pretty freaking good. God damn it. You thought we weren't in the fucking car for the post-lift talk. You would be wrong. You would be freaking wronger than wrong. 
this fucker's fixed. Oh, look at that. look how easy it is to turn. I tell you what, you never know what you have until you lose it. This this is perfect. This is the best. But post, uh, actually, it's a considerable amount of time has passed. It is uh, it's nine o'clock now. I'm going back to my parents' house for the weekend so I can sleep in my real bed and eat their food. That's the way to do it. That is the way to do it. Because I don't have class on Friday. So why not? Why freaking not? Don't worry, lifts will continue. Come on, is that even a question? Is that even a real fucking question? Uh, so let's, uh, let's get into arms a little bit. So those, I, I'll say this, those sets of uh, skull crushers, they were okay. They were all right. Honestly, I mean, this, the movement of doing a skull crusher, I think it's probably more suited just for loading the triceps with a fucking ton of tension. That's, it's, uh, that's the main selling point of skull crushers, as far as I'm concerned. And, you know, it's definitely good at that. Skull crushers are the movement which you'll be able to load your triceps up with the most fucking weight possible. Enough weight that you could fucking crush your skull, as the name would imply. But, it will just destroy your freaking elbows. Like, I've never really done skull crushers heavy and then said, wow, my elbows feel nice, nice and warm. It's always a little, well, at best, it feels fine. And at worst, I get a little bit of, you know, discomfort from it. So, really not the biggest fan in the freaking world. Uh, I do like him every so often, but then this is my this is my dilemma. If I do them early in the workout when my triceps are still strong and I want to load them up with a lot of weight, then I'm, it's going to hurt my elbows. It's not good. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do any movement that hurts. That's pretty basic. You know, that's you learn that in lifter 101. Don't do shit if it hurts. And then if I do it later in the lift, after I've already pre-exhausted my triceps, then I don't really get a very good squeeze at all. And later in the lift, that's when I want to do movements where I can squeeze through my triceps really hard at the bottom. So, I i don't know if skull crushers really have a place in my training right now. The pushdowns felt pretty good. Honestly, I would have preferred to finish the tricep part of the workout doing, uh, like, cable crossovers or grab onto a cable over here one over here and then do extensions like this I like that a lot as a finisher uh, just because it's a it's a pretty solid squeeze man like I was just fucking saying uh, and then the pushdowns obviously I love the fucking pushdowns that's not a freaking question love them and I sort of hinted at this on the way I mean biceps was fucking dude, biceps who gives a shit what you do for biceps, man? As long as you're doing curls, you're hitting them. You are freaking hitting them. I will say this. Those dumb... No, 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 no. What am I saying? Those straight bar cable curls, I need to do those more often. I've been doing those incorrectly for a while, and I did not actually know it. Because what I've been doing is approaching it like I would a normal dumbbell curl in the sense that I've got, I mean, I said this in the video, but I want to, I want to go over it again, even just for my own sake, so I can ingrain it into my mind. Uh, you know, I, th I used to think about them like just a normal dumbbell curl where I'd have my arms at my sides. And then this was the pivoting motion, right? With my elbows, you know, at my, well, you know, at my fucking sides. But the way I was doing them with that straight bar was I was really focusing on uh, supinating my hands. I know you might not like me saying such technical terms, but like having uh, almost, I was literally almost thinking to myself that I was trying to pull my elbows towards each other in front of my body as I was doing those curls because I would, I would come up. It's kind of difficult to explain now, but I've like kind of fucking, it's, it's like I was trying to, uh, take the bar that I was holding on to right here and bend it in this direction. That was almost the cue that I was uh, thinking about when I was doing those curls. And that was a freaking solid ass stimulus because afterwards 
I just sitting there like flexing my bicep way out here on this peak like kind of the outer edge it was fucking burning way more than normal so I've heard uh, we're going back to some Mike Menser logic uh, he was talking about how barbell curls are the best for bicep development and he was saying the exact same thing with the fucking uh, upturned wrists this guy's oh my god these guys are jaywalking right now on a like Ooh, freaky. No, so, uh, like, I've said this before, too, on, um, whenever I do that machine curl, where I, you know, I sit down and there's a handle on either side of me, that machine curl, I really feel my biceps firing, because my hand, my palm, is facing up towards my shoulder. Because you gotta think about this, when you work your forearms, how are you positioning your hands, right? You're doing a curl in this manner. That's putting a lot of emphasis on your forearm, this meat back here, which if you are if you want that to be bigger, then good for you, hit it directly. But if you're trying to hit your biceps, I think that doing reverse curls or even hammer curls is probably not the best method. If you want to do a movement where you're prioritizing your bicep as the main mover, then having your palm as upturned as possible is gonna you know, allow you to work more fucking bicep. I've, uh, I, I'm really just spitting out what I've sort of uh, digested in a couple of other other, uh, other videos that I've seen before. But like, look look at the buy. Literally just turning my hand like this is flexing it. You get what I'm saying? So don't uh, don't take that as original thought. I'm just you know I'm just uh, re reiterating it, even for myself. So those are definitely going to get thrown into the routine. Honestly, those Easy Bar Preacher Curls today didn't really, they didn't really feel that good. Like, they were fine, but they weren't, like, you know, really freaking me out how good they felt like they have in the past. Like, I've done those Easy Bar Preachers before, and honestly, it felt like that was the only movement that I wanted to do. Like, I wanted to stay there for the entire bicep workout. Just... <sighs> <sighs> just from the fucking contraction, the stretch, the burn, the pump, everything all together combined, I was like, this movement is the shit. And that just sort of goes to show again, you know, sometimes specific movements or lifts, whatever, they're just not going to feel that good. And when I, when I say lifts, I mean like exercises. Like some days for me, lat pull down is my shit, and I want to sit on the lat pull down for seven sets straight. And then other days, I might do two sets and say, okay, I want to just move on to a row. I want to do something else. That's kind of why I like the method of training that I have where, you know, once you've developed enough experience and you can choose and, you know, pick and choose between different machines and doing movements in different ways and you know like a hundred different kinds of curls and you know 50 different lat pull down variations and this, that, you get what I'm saying. You know, once you have that sort of... Um, What's the word I'm trying to think of? Let me look up. Uh, I got I to type in my home address. I don't know where the fuck I am. Um, blah, 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 blah. Once you have that um, inventory of movements at your disposal, as well as the experience that it took you to get there, and I don't mean just knowing how to set up this movement. Like, I'm not talking about, oh, you watched an... Uh, you know, you watched a, a video of a guy showing you how to do a, a new kind of curl. Oh, that means I know how to do it. You have to actually get some experience going to the gym and try it. Like watching someone do an exercise and actually doing an exercise in such a way that you're going to, you know, be really flexing the intended muscle are two completely different things. But So once you've got that inventory and the experience to go with it, if I want to go in and do chest then I'm going to base the workout off of what I think and feel is going to be a good you know, choice of movements. If I love inclined barbell, I'll sit there for five sets and just gradually decrease in weight as I get weaker once I start my working sets. But if I do one set, or even if I just do the warm-up and it kind of feels off, then I'll just say, fuck it, move on to something else. You know, I'll do some Smith Machine or Dumbbell. So I don't think that there's a specific work at, like... Do not even think for one second that you need to find the specific 
chest workout for you that's going to blow up your chest. You know, it doesn't exist. What you should I've said this before too. What you should really be focusing on is trying to get a basic understanding of different, you know, workout uh, schemes. Reps, sets, drop sets, supersets, whatever else you're into. And then do what you think feels good. Go hard, get a crazy pump, and, you know, go home and eat. That's all you got to do. You know, I was talking to one guy today. He was asking me what kind of split he should do. And, you know, to an extent, I'm like, who gives a shit, man? Push, pull, legs, Arnold, freaking, uh, like, back and buys, chest and tries, and then legs and shoulders, or any combination doesn't it doesn't matter that's not that's just at face value that's just what you're doing that day what's really important is the actual workouts themselves like this whole time of talking to people in the gym uh, even even like before people come up to me because they recognize me from these no one has ever asked me how much volume should I be doing like nobody goes hey man I just did a can I can I show you this workout it's got 25 sets total for chest Dude, way too freaking much. Way too freaking much. Or it's a leg day and it's like, well, I got three sets of hamstrings. Way too freaking little. Way too, I mean, you get what I'm saying here. Uh, I'd say, as a general rule, let's say your workout split consists of hitting everything twice a week. So if you do push pull legs, then you do push pull legs, push pull legs, rest whatever you're into, each workout, I would say, should have about, well, and this is not a, this is not a specific number, 8 to 12 working sets. You know, my, uh, I'm not saying this is the way, this is how I go about it, but in my mind, when I'm about to do a workout, or let's say a, uh, when I'm about to hit a muscle in a workout, let's say it was arm day, so we'll use triceps as an example, I'm not going to... So let me just say what I do, and then I'll say what I don't do after. What I do is I pick my first movement, and then before I even get there, I may do some little warm-up work, maybe some rotator cuff activations, maybe some maybe some forearm activation. Even if it's triceps, you're still kind of working your forearms because you're gripping the bar, and you kind of just want some blood flow in this area. You know, So once I get basically warm, I'll move on to my first movement, or whichever one I think I want to do. And I'll do a couple of freaking reps with a light weight. And then I'll do a few reps with a heavier weight. And then I'll do a few reps with a heavier weight. Maybe do that, you know, four times until I'm at a weight, which I would say is going to be good enough for my first working set. Right? The warm-up just served as, well, a fucking warm-up to expose me to the weight, to prepare me to do an actual heavy working set, but not tire me out. So then, when I do like three sets of heavy pushdowns, and I move on to, let's say, you know, tricep extensions with the rope, or maybe those skull crushers, I'm not going to do any more feeler sets. My triceps have already been exposed to tension. It doesn't really know the difference between, you know, pushing down a bar on a pushdown, or extending the easy bar on the, the skull crushers. All it knows is to fucking flex and to relax a little. So moving from one movement to the other, once you've already loaded the muscle, I say you're primed to do your actual working weight. Now again, with more experience, you can just load up the weight without even have to, having to uh, you know, do a feeler set because you pretty much have a good gauge of your strength and you've done movements enough in different patterns and whatever where you know, okay, I just finished doing the stack for a, a set of 12 Based on that strength level, I think maybe a 25 and a 10 will feel good on this set of skull crushers. Now, again, and then in my mind, I'm not even thinking those thoughts. That's just like going to skull crushers, 25 and a 10. That's like just the extent of it, because the rest of it's sort of just subconscious. And then, you know, I do a few sets, decrease the weight as I get weaker, and then, you know, move on to whatever else. I find that a lot of people sort of do a, a little bit too much fluff volume, and I did the same thing. I think a lot of people move on to from like push downs and then they move on to let's say let's say you like close grip bench I'm not saying I do it's just another tricep movement they might start off and do a set of like 15 reps with a really light weight and the set was fucking RPE 4 
that did nothing. That seriously did nothing. You know, I, I want every, any, so when it comes to sets that count in a workout, the only things that you should be counting are the working sets. Any sort of uh, warm up, any, anything you're doing in preparation for your actual working sets is nothing apart from serving its purpose as warming you up. So, you know, that's sort of just my two cents on the matter. But, I mean, when I was younger, I did the same shit. I, uh, I remember doing for, I don't remember where I learned it or if I just sort of like came up with it based on hearing shit. Uh, I definitely probably read it somewhere or watched a video on it. My basic routine for any muscle group was for that specific workout, I mean, I would do push, pull legs and then repeat it. I would do five exercises and I would do five sets per exercise. So for triceps, that would be maybe straight bar push down, rope, dip, overhead extension, you get what I'm saying, five different tricep movements. And I would do five sets each. And each set, I would start with a lightweight, get heavier, 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 and then that last set of the five was the hard one. Looking back, I mean, those first four sets, man, I don't think those fucking made you any progress. You being me in the past. You know, I think it was just training, but those uh, those sets where you seriously fucking push yourself, that's where you're fucking really etching into your body and telling it to fucking grow. Or, you know, to maintain the muscle you've already built in a dieting context like I'm in. So, main idea, the more that you catch yourself doing sets where you put the weight down and you know for a fact that you did not even approach your maximum intensity, then you have got a problem. A problem which, if your goal is to make some gains, you're gonna have to freaking address. I think that's enough of that little uh, training rant. And then, you know, do as many hard sets as you feel is good, get a pump and fucking go home. You know, if you do that for long enough and you start to see gains, then clearly it's working for you. You know, no matter what the fuck I say or anybody says, the only fucking thing that matters is whether or not it gets you results. If, um, if a team of scientists, Harvard, Yale, Stanford, insert another Ivy League universities, medical training team, whatever, perfected a workout routine for Joe Schmo, and he followed it to a T, and then he gained zero muscle, then everything that they did was fucking bullshit. Who gives a fuck? At the end of the day, the results speak for themselves. So if I see a dude who's fucking jacked, he's doing just a weird ass set, I guess sometimes that's you looking at me when I do like Smith Machine Bench and I'm like barely doing any range of motion at the, at the end of it. Or if I'm doing curls where I'm really kind of swinging the last few reps, you know, there's, there's probably merit to questioning the method, questioning the, the logic behind it. But at the end of the day, if it works, it works. So, uh, you know, we got to focus on what works for you. All right, now I'm, now I'm done. I want to, let's talk a little bit more casually. Because I have fucking two hours ahead of me. And no, you saw the video. I'm not going to do two hours of car talk. Or maybe I am. No, I'm, I'm, not, I'm just kidding. I'm just freaking kidding myself. So plan for tomorrow is going to be cardio in the morning, obviously. Uh, I don't know. I, I want to wake up early. The YMCA that I like near where I live, it's got a sauna. I like doing the sauna after cardio, not because I think it really gives me any benefits. It's just, I just like it. That's really the only reason why. So maybe I'll wait until 8 to do my cardio. Yeah, but then that's 8. Planet Fitness opens up at 6. Maybe I want to go over there. Either way, 30 minutes on the seated bike, burning what the machine says is 300 calories at least, is going to be done. And then later in the day, I'm going to destroy legs. I think I'll probably go to... Yeah, I'll probably go to a metro because they have a... They have this laying, like, stack loaded hack squat that I really like. I want to bust some sets of that out for quads. Uh, 
but then again, the leg extensions there aren't really my favorite either, so what do I really want to do? I don't know. That's, that's tomorrow's problem. I'll figure it out then. Either way, I'm going to get a crazy leg pump. Uh, ooh, I left my scale at home. Well, at, at my school home. And uh, I remember when I bought this one and I, I tested it out next to the one that's at this, you know, my parents' house. They gave me different measurements, even though I was weighing myself at the same time. I think I'll probably just, eh, whatever, I'll just fucking weigh myself. So, in terms of the recent spike in weight, it does correlate with the diet change because I've been doing 3,000 calories instead of 2,500. But I am kind of, no, I don't want to say baffled, but I am kind of surprised that it was like a, you know, a three pound jump. That was not three pounds of fucking fat. That's not how that shit works. But, there's probably some just carbs and water being a little bit more full. I'll still stick to the 3,000 for the next few days. But unless I start dropping down again, then I'm going back to the 2,500. Because I'm not, this is not a maintenance phase. I'm not trying to do maintenance. I'm trying to lose body fat in between bulks. That's the whole point. So, if you got to do a little bit of a steeper deficit than you might prefer, if you want the scales number to actually change, which is going to mean that your body fat is decreasing, it's being burnt off you, then that's what you got to do. Uh, full day of eating, diet edition. Well, I guess. It's always the diet, but full day of eating uh, calorie deficit edition. I'll do that. I'll do that this week. Well, next week, because by the time this comes out, it'll be Friday. So not it, within the week, I'll do it. I've done it before. But you can uh, you can trust me. You can freaking trust me. But hey, man, fuck! I think that's all I got. A little bit of a. A little bit of training talk, a little bit of intensity talk, a little bit of, um, um, I don't even remember what I just said. You get the idea. I hope you had a freaking baller lift. If you're dieting, I hope you're under that calorie limit. You're, you're in a deficit. The scale is going down. Vice versa, if you're bulking, I hope you're putting on some lean mass. If you got to add a little bit of fat tissue as well, then what are you going to do? That's kind of part of the game. Don't add too much, though, or else you're going to be fucked. I'll get into that more later on. And, uh... I'm kicking a dead horse by bringing up cardio. So, I will see you tomorrow for freaking legs.